Hi everyone, my name is Matt Hancock. I am a scientific software developer at Enthought here in Austin, Texas. Today I'm going to talk about image segmentation using a well-known method called level set segmentation. But we'll introduce something new, which is how we can use machine learning in that method so that we can use labeled data as training data. Let's get started. Okay, so what is image segmentation? Image segmentation means to find the boundaries of an object in an image. So if we have an image like the one on the left, which is a circle with a piece cut out, maybe our objective is to find the, the boundary of the original circle. Um, that's what's shown on the right in red. Image segmentation plays a very important role in image analysis. So for example, in medical imaging, let's say that you're finding the boundary of a tumor. Well then, that enables you to uh, calculate the, the volume of, of the tumor, or maybe the, the spikiness of the boundary, things that are medically useful. All right, so what are level sets, and what do they have to do with image segmentation? Well, if we think about segmentation, the segmentation boundary as a curve, uh, you might recall that there's a couple of different ways to represent a curve. We can do it explicitly, like on the left we have a parametric curve, so it, it's, it's a vector of, of the x element and the y element, cosine of t, sine of t. Uh, it's explicit because I give you a t and you tell me the x and y. On the other hand, we can represent a curve implicitly. So we have this function u of xy that's equal to x squared plus y squared minus 1, and if we look at all the places where that's equal to 0, all the xy that that's 0, that also uh, represents the same curve. So we would call that the zero level set of that function u. Um, why would we make things a little bit more complicated? Well, it turns out that if we use this implicit representation, um, we can do a lot more things more flexibly. Um, so if this curve is evolving over time and um, things are appearing or disappearing, disappearing or if this curve splits into two parts, um, that becomes really difficult to handle in the explicit representation. Um, the implicit representation also extends to higher dimensions more readily. Um, in the explicit case, you have to have an ex explicit equation for a surface, um, which becomes uh, some, somewhat cumbersome. Okay, so let's talk about the basics of how this would work. So we'd start with some initialization. So this red curve is the zero level set of this function u at time equal to zero. Um, in this case, it's a kind of a bad guess, but let's start with that. Um, and then we let this curve evolve. So this is at time equal to 50, 100, 150, and hopefully this curve go goes towards the desired boundary. So we need a couple of things. We need an equation that tells the curve how to move, but that equation also needs to be flexible so that we can tell it to move towards boundaries that of objects that we want it to go towards in the image. Okay, so here is um, the equation that's going to dictate how the zero level curve should move. It's shown here on the left. This is a partial differential equation. Um, it's the time derivative of u on the left. Um, and then you see on the right a, a term v and then the gradient magnitude of uh, u. So it turns out that if, if we use this equation, that, that term v um, is named because it, it dictates the uh, curve velocity. velocity. Um, in particular, it dictates the velocity along the curve in directions uh, perpendicular to the curve. So that's what's shown on the right there in those uh, green arrows. Um, so the key idea, idea from uh, Milady and um, Sethian from a paper back probably, I think, in 1996 or 1995, um, is that we can let this velocity function be a, a function of the image itself. So for example, um, you could say, well, let's make the velocity large when you're not near image edges, but then when you get close to an edge, make the velocity small. So if we take something like the exponential of the negative of image edge strength, that's going to be a velocity who is small when it gets near edges. 
All right, now that we have the basics of how this would work, let, let's look at a sketch of how we'd implement it in Python. So here I'm just importing um, the Gaussian gradient magnitude function from SciPy's ND image package and also implement or er, importing um, this find contours helper function from scikit image. So let's just step through it. Um, first, we'd read the image in. Um, we'd initialize this function u in some manner. Maybe we do it with a terrible guess, like a you know a ball off to the side, like uh, was shown earlier. And then we enter this loop. So for i and range, some maximum number of iterations that we allow. Let's construct the velocity. This is what we just showed in the last slide. We're taking the Gaussian gradient magnitude of the image with some choice of sigma and then taking the negative exponential of that, and that's going to be our velocity. The next step is to construct this gradient magnitude of u term, which we do in the two subsequent lines, and then we update with a discretization of this PDE. And if you know anything all, at all about um, numerical solutions for partial differential equations, you'll know that this is not quite the right approach. It's unstable and things like that, but it, it'll suffice for now for illustration. And then finally, we, after done looping, we get the final results by running fine contours on u with level equal to zero, and that give us actual contours that we can plot on top of, on top of images. Okay, so everything that we've talked about up until this point is not incredibly new. Um, it's, it's sort of a classical approach uh, for, for, for level set segmentation. Um, it has some disadvantages. Uh, designing this velocity term is, is difficult to do um, in such a way that works in, in, in all the contexts that you'd like it to work. Um, so for example here, if this, if I'm showing this image from, from earlier, which is a, a circle with a piece cut out. Um, if we tried to do this to perform segmentation using a velocity function that was defined in terms of edges, this would be that this would fail because um, uh, the the boundary is not defined just in terms of the, the object that we want is not defined in terms of image edge information alone. So what what ends up happening is that if you want to design this velocity function manually, you start adding in more and more hand tuned complexity um, to handle the types of contexts in which you um, anticipate. So let's suppose that we have some some data set of images and, um, and and annotations of where the boundaries of objects should be in those images so this for, for example here is um, a, a data set of it, it's lung CT images and the the, bound, the things being segmented are, are what, what are called nodules or, or lung tumors um, so the question is if you have something like this in, in your hands a data set like this that has been annotated by experts um, could we use this, uh, this annotated data um, to eliminate this manual design step, um, the, ma the manual design of this velocity function in the level set segmentation approach? Okay, so let's suppose that's the case. We have a data set of images that have been annotated of where the boundaries of things are in those, um, in those images. We want to use that as training data um, to eliminate the, the manual design of the velocity function in the level set approach. Here, here's the idea. Um, let's just replace the velocity function with some sort of machine learning regressor. Okay, that's that sounds like a good idea, but what do we do? Um, what is the target value that we should be regressing on, rather, is the question we want to ask or to know the answer to. And the answer is that um, we regress on the sine distance value from the annotated boundary in the training data. So let me explain a little bit more about what I mean by uh, regressing on the sign distance value. So we have on the left a training data item. This is the image with the boundary um, drawn by, um, uh, let's say, a radiologist in this case. This is provided in, in, the, in the data set as well. What we want to do is we want to have a function um, which takes the image as input, and then as output, it produces the sign distance of that, uh, the sign distance of the annotated boundary. Um, so this is the sign distance of that annotated boundary in red. Um, what does sign distance mean? It means that 
it's the distance to the boundary um, and it's positive on the inside and negative on the outside. That's what the sine part and sine distance means. So here in the middle, it's, it's most bright because this is farthest from the boundary in red. And then as we go out here, this is in black um, because it's distant um, from the red boundary as well. And then when we're right at the boundary, that's gonna be zero. So that might seem a little uh, strange that we're gonna use the, the sine distance transform of the annotation boundary or try, or try to uh, predict that um, to use as the velocity in the level set equation. Um, there, there are some you know, mathematical reasons and you could show that it, it works out, things go towards where you'd like them to go if you use that thing. But um, you're able to show uh, visually um, that that's the case. So I'm gonna start with an initialization of um, a bad guess that's a, a ball um, below this uh, uh, red boundary. So the, um, the, 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 the zero level set is shown in blue and the, and the true boundary is shown in red. And we're gonna let this thing um, update using the level set equation that we showed earlier, but in, that, in the velocity term, we're gonna let that velocity be the sine distance transform of the red boundary. So you can see that it works, and um, it's, it's missing those little edges um, at the very top, but if we let this iterate um, uh, a, few, a few more times, it would, it would match it exactly. So it works. Um, this guides the zero level set towards where we'd like it to go. Um, of course, in practice, we can't use the sine distance transform of the, uh, the true boundary because we won't know the true boundary, but if we have a data set, um, we can use that data set and use the true boundaries in that case as training data to build some sort of machine learning regression model that is used um, to predict what the sign distance value should be in cases where we don't know what the true boundary actually is. So now I'll explain um, what, I, what I'm calling the level set machine learning algorithm. Um, so for training, uh, let's suppose that for each iteration, um, meaning each update we do in the level set equation after we discretize that PDE, we'll fit a machine learning model. Um, the model is what's shown in yellow here. Um, this is for the nth iteration. Uh, it accepts the kth image for the data set as input, and the model is being fit so that it approximates the corresponding sine distance transform value for the kth example in the data set. So what this means is that in the data set we have, uh, which is indexed by k, we have an image, and we also have the annotation boundary. We take that annotation boundary from the training data, do the sine distance transform, and that's what this model is um, fit to predict. And then we do this for a number of times until uh, while we're monitoring the, um, the, the loss on some validation set, when that starts degrading, we can, just, we can just stop. And the result of this will be capital N regression models um, that we can use for each iteration um, little n. Okay, so that's the basic training procedure. Um, for deployment, um, how's this going to work? Uh, deployment or testing, you could say. Well, the input will be an unseen image, one that we didn't use for fitting any of these regression models. And then we can just iterate the level set equation. So we update, uh, with some, we start with some initialization, u0, and we update, multiply by some delta t, um, and then we use that regression model that we got from the training procedure on this unseen image to give us um, what is hopefully a good velocity. Um, and by good, I mean one that um, hopefully matches the sine distance transform of the true boundary that we don't actually know. And then we multiply by this gradient magnitude term and we replace it, we replace u with this update and we uh, rinse and repeat. So there's an implementation for this um, training, uh, level set machine learning algorithm training procedure um, in a library called level set machine Lear learning or um, LSML is the name of the Python package. This is available at uh, my GitHub below. Um, 
So I'll just walk through how this works. Um, we import the main model, level set machine learning. Um, there are some feature transforms that we can, um, that kind of come out of the box that we can import. Um, and then there's an initializer that's say just like a ball initializer. And we initialize our model, we specify the features, and we just specify the initializer. And then the next thing we do is we fit um, the entire thing. And what we do here is we specify essentially the data, um, the training data. Um, so we specify the images and the segmentations from the training data. And then we specify the um, machine learning regression model that is going to be used at each iteration. And in this case, you can see that I'm using a scikit-learn pipeline. And this, pipe, this model is really just a, a random forest model prefixed by a um, standard scalar. So this is a pipeline of two things, um, but uh, really this is the regression model is just a random forest model. Um, there's dot dot dots here, but I, I believe in the things that I, uh, in the examples that I'll show, I used parameters that um, were pretty close to the default parameters. All right, so we've done the dirty work now. Um, we looked at uh, the, the method from the mathematical point of view, we looked at some some code that implements it and some pseudocode about the algorithm in general. Um, now let's try it on some actual data. Um, here's some toy data, uh, toy meaning it's generated uh, synthetically. Um, these are kind of gestalt images. Uh, these are little Pac-Man circles and they have uh, sort of an, an illusion of a triangle. And let's say that triang triangular region is the, the actual object in the image that we want to find. Um, so on the top are examples of the images, and then on the, on the bottom row uh, in, in red are the, the assumed ground truth boundaries that we'd like for the algorithm to find. Um, so I'm showing five here, but we can generate much many more um, for the data set to be used in the algorithm. So we've applied the uh, level set machine learning um, algorithm using the code that I showed us a few slides back to um, this uh, toy data set. And now we have uh, one of the images from the, the, the testing data set, um, never before seen by um, any, any of the machine learning models um, used in training. So here's an image, and uh, here's the first initialization, or the initialization, so the first iteration um, of, of the uh, zero level set U. And what we're, what we're doing here is actually using a checkerboard pattern um, this is, uh, there's a convenience function in like image that does this. So this is just like a, a, a uniform guess of like, it could be anywhere type of, type of thing. So this is iteration zero, our initial guess. Here's um, iteration one, two, four, going by powers of two. Here's iteration eight, um, 16, finally starting to get some coherence. Um, 32, 64, 128, uh, 256 and iteration 400. Iteration 400 was the uh, the max cap that I, I put on these. You can see, see that um, it actually it finds the triangle. Um, there's uh, The edges are not perfectly straight like you'd want them to be, um, as the gone choose boundary is, but um, it, it works. So it works um, on, the, on the triangle data. But you might say, hey, that's, that's toy data. That does, that's not real um, data, which is true. So let's, let's try it on... Um, tried the, the level set machine learning algorithm on uh, some real data. So this is, um, so, so I took uh, the, um, the data set of lung CT images with, uh, with um, radiologists provided boundaries of lung tumors and used that as, as training data. And this is one of the examples um, from the testing set. Um, so here we go. Uh, again, we're gonna use a checkerboard pattern for the initialization guess. So this is um, the zero level set at t equal to zero. And now here's t equal to one, two, and so on, 64, all the way up to, to 128. Neat. Let's see another example on this, um, this lung data set. Uh, so the lung nodule um, problem, it, uh, segmenting these lung nodules in, in CT images poses some difficulties. Um, 
the data is actually in 3D. I'm, I'm just using 2D slices through the centers of the nodules as training data, but you can um, do this in 3D as well. Um, but it's, it's challenging because um, there's a lot of other anatomy that kind of gets in the way of, of the nodule. So this is actually the lung wall, and these bright spots are um, rib bones. And then over here, uh, the, uh, the lung nodule, this is uh, the vasculature of, of the lung that's coming off. Um, so you have to kind of account for all these things, and that can be um, that can pose some challenges. Okay, so again, we'll initialize with that, that same checkerboard pattern. This is um, iteration zero. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on, sixty-four up to uh, one twenty-eight. So it does a it does a reasonably good job. It doesn't include. Um, doesn't include much of these uh, the extravascular regions. Um, it draws in from the, the long wall here, but you can see that there is actually some problems um, over here. It's including part of the uh, the long wall and the, and the rib um, bone where it, where it shouldn't be. Um, it turns out for this data actually, you can play some tricks and do some more feature engineering um, to uh, to handle cases. These are called juxtaplural uh, the plural wall. Um, that you can do some feature engineering to handle these um, juxtaplural cases uh, better. Okay, so that's all I have. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I have some references here, uh, again, to the, to, the, to the GitHub repo that implements this, this algorithm, and then the archive link is um, a, a link to a paper on this algorithm with uh, more detail than you probably ever care to know. But uh, yeah, thanks.